Hello everyone and welcome to another video with me 320 Sim Pilot and today we are taking a look at the upcoming Brussels Airport scenery add-on from Aerosoft. This is the Aerosoft Mega Airport Brussels. It is in the preview stage at the moment so today we're going to take a look at a early build of it but by the time you see this video it will have just been released most likely. The date for release is the 20th of April 2022. This is a serious add-on uh, in terms of scenery detail it is a major international airport in central europe as you might imagine i say central europe it's western europe but it's uh, obviously part of the heart of the european union being in brussels and there it is we are just about to start our approach we're going to fly the ils to land here onto runway 25 right and then we're going to have a look at some of the details on the ground but expect things like custom scenery in terms of the terminal buildings the taxiways the taxiway markings We've also got wind socks. We've got visual guidance for docking the aircraft into the uh, into the or parking the aircraft, I should say, more than docking, uh, and uh, some other neat little features and animations. So we're going to go take a look at those. Uh, so do please enjoy the video, and uh, I hope it's of interest to you. Just before we get started, I'd like to remind you about our partnership with Apex Gaming PCs, where we have some custom 320 sim pilot flight simulator computers we have the bus and the manta you can customize them on the website and you can use the code 320 sim pilot to get a discount of five percent you'll also be supporting the channel if you do buy one right let's get on with the video 300 100 above Two hundred. minimum 100 50 40 30 20 10 retard vacated the runway as you can see on Bravo 6 and let's just take a first look at the taxiways and the markings so of course this is having been filmed using default Microsoft Flight Simulator ground scenery and taxiway markings we have talked in the past about uh, the, the taxiway signs add-on from Just Flight this is all default and then I've installed this scenery so what we get is what you get with the the mega airport uh, Brussels scenery so as you can see, correct markings here to enter the runway. Big red signs, very nice and clear. I like the slightly faded red paint as well. 07 left, 25 right. Very important, of course, because it is crucial that we are aware we are getting close to an actual active runway. And then you've got the spot on holding short bar here with the double solid line on this side saying do not cross in this direction. Whereas the dash line on the other side says you can cross it. Uh, we've also got flashing wigwags, always nice to have which are another alert to the pilots that they are approaching an active runway. But as we move across, this is where the details really start to stand out to me and I'm very impressed. We have the correct signage with 07 left, 25 right, Bravo 6, and then we've also got the Cat 2 3 holding point, Bravo 6, which is gonna be uh, marked with a um, double line. So that is shown here with the Cat 2 3 holding point, which is the, the ladder. The way to remember that is it looks like a little uh, Roman numeral two. You've got uh, two so cat two i the low vis holding point so that's all looking very good there's the other line over there and as we start to get our first glimpse of the airport and the terminal have a look at this here's the taxiways you've got different textures for asphalt and what i really like um as you zoom in or as we zoom in more correct taxi signs here by the way you've got outer three bravo six inner four i'm going to show you the charts in just a moment uh, you've got these grates. Now these you often see on walkarounds. They make a nice clunk as you taxi over them. I don't know what they're for. I think they're drainage, but they also, uh, I 
think help with the expansion of the concrete and asphalt or whatever the ground's made of in the, the temperatures because of course they can go from very cold to suddenly very hot when the sun hits them in the morning so that uh, i'm talking about this this sort of marking here along the taxiway so just nice texturing that gives it a real sense of of the the real airports airports are often a mismatch they're never really uniform aprons because of course aprons are built at different times taxiways are fiddled with lighting systems are upgraded and adjusted so there we go so you can see here they, the apron uh, is slightly different to the maneuvering area here as the video moves on, we're going to take a look at, in closer detail at the, the airport building itself. But already you can see here, we've got the correct transparent glass building, very common for modern sort of terminal like Brussels has. And you've also got correct jetways, look at that, even with the sponsorship, uh, different for each of the terminals. You've then got the, the little slide here, quite a nice, fun, unique feature of the Brussels terminal where you've got uh, the bags can slide down um, to the bottom, which looks rather fun. I have never been on one. Uh, despite having been to Brussels many, many times, I've operated out of this airport, but uh, I've never had to go on one of those, uh, sadly, I'm sure. It feels like a sort of Christmas party sort of thing, getting a glimpse of it inside the terminal there. So what we'll do is we're going to taxi along and we're going to park up and take a look. Just want to point out though, look at all the clutter uh, on the grounds. This is what airports are like, especially active gates. You've got bags and this is a ground power units and you've got bollards and all sorts just all over the place. It's great, really feels like there's uh, a lot to be happening here. <laughs> so uh, yeah, let's taxi around and I'm gonna show you a few other things before we get to our stands. Now to start off with, we vacated on Bravo 6 over here and headed off up here. And that takes you over towards the main terminal where the commercial flights typically park up. So that's where we will be going. But before we do that, I just want to take you on a little tour of the right hand side here with some of the maintenance hangars and cargo operation. They're often separated from the main passenger terminals uh, in these sorts of airports. And what we're going to do is we're going to just taxi back onto the runway and use this little holding point here. And we're going to show you some of the animations they've included. But look at that. We've got the custom DHL marking, Lufthansa hangers all in the right place. Really nice to see. And as ever, I always talk about how I like little dioramas. Uh, we've got the 3D roads model here. And if I bring the camera around and down, we also have, again, more taxiway markings that are correct. And we have um, all the, the side roads, the water waste treatment over here. It's all all been added in so let me taxi over and we'll take a look right so we are now on the other side of the runway the right hand side of 25 right so I've now vacated Alpha 5 and then we've got left we're now along November 4 just up here and then we're gonna make our right turn in towards the hangars over here so that this is the area we are taxiing around in I'm gonna slow it right down as you can see we have some barriers and gates for the Lufthansa Technic servicing area the hangar so I'm hoping what's going to happen is as we get closer, they will open. Make sure our lights are off so we don't blind the ground crew. Let's get rid of the taxi lights as well. Um, yeah, I'm expecting as we get closer, the gates to open up and the hangar to open up as well, uh, if you can believe it. So let's taxi right up to the line. I would imagine this is normally done under tow, but I must confess, I do not know for sure. There we go. There's the hangars. <laughs> um, but yeah, we don't normally maneuver aircraft under their own power when we're dealing with margins as, as fine as this. But look at that great little detail. Let's see if we can fit it through. But I have no idea. I genuinely do not know what they would do, um, but I'd be surprised if they'd ever taxi an airplane <laughs> with the wings over the, uh, the fences like this. This is probably, I don't know if the 320 would be allowed to do that. Um, but someone else I'm sure will know. And then as we head over to the hangar, expecting to see the doors open, believe it or not. There are as well some animations built into some of the hangars that will uh, happen not when you arrive, but sort of at random intervals or scripted intervals, I'm not sure. But uh, those may interrupt the animation of the doors. But there we go. As we approach, the hangar doors open up and we can head in again you will not be taxiing an airliner into a hangar like this under its own power. The chances are well, it would be uh, towed in. But that is a great piece of uh, fun that I have not seen uh, done before uh, in these, these sorts of scenery. So that is a very nice detail. So we're not going to park up in the hangar, of course. That would be no fun. We are going to go back over to the other side and taxi into our stands. Right, so here we are then on Bravo 7. We've moved along one. Let's imagine we're cleared to taxi via outer and then we'll take uh, a taxiway into this apron here next to the airfield reference point, the ARP, and we'll go and park on a stand there. And if we look at the parking stands, 
uh, that will be somewhere in this apron here uh, and we'll go and pick one of the stands on either side here so we're going to take the outer taxiways to get there now they've added some traffic in as you can see <laughs> causing a bit of a problem for us so uh, yeah uh, you don't generally see cars driving on the the maneuvering areas unless they're operations vehicles other vehicles like catering and so on will stick to the roads typically uh, and also vehicles have to give way in real flying so if you see an operations vehicle like this if you're cleared to taxi along here then that's their problem they have to move so as you can see as we taxi along the outer taxiway we have uh, again what we saw earlier the correct signage the cat 2 holding points the cat 1 holding points then you've got the main terminal with added traffic uh, driving around over there. So what I'm going to do now is, of course, we need to check out the different conditions. So let's set it to nighttime. So as the sun sets, it has added taxiway lighting and signage lighting. And there we go. Looking very nice indeed. I, I do like the, the lighting system in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So these signs are lit. They're also surprisingly big if you ever get close to one in, uh, in real life. And then we've got the... Uh, centerline lighting which would always be green on taxiways and blue edge lighting taxiways by the way don't need to have both of those to count as a fancy airport they can have uh, one or the other not uncommon to have airports with just blue edge lighting as opposed to um, green centerline and blue edge lighting but there we go you also get these raised up blue lights and there, there's an alternative version which is that the lowered ones uh, so there's all sorts of difference and these centerline lights as you can see they're a little bit uh, raised and if you're a passenger you'll feel the bumps as you go over each one bump 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 now i might try and take a shortcut here we could take mike down into our apron no point driving around unnecessarily uh, and also we'd be getting in the way of lots of other traffic let's try and close that there we go so all clear on the right around we go there's the tower, by the way, quite an iconic tower. I always think it looks very impressive over there um, because it's sat in the middle of nowhere. A lot of control towers are in the middle of the airport or surrounded by large hangars and terminal buildings. But this one <laughs> just sits out in the, in the woods looking very impressive. So that's nicely modeled. Really, really good detail there. So here's Mike as we enter the aprons. The main Brussels airport shown up there. Yeah, this is a seriously impressive scenery. You're really going to feel... Uh, like you've arrived at the the real the real deal when you come to this one even some lights and signs in the terminal which we will of course check out uh, soon they've added i think i mentioned ground vehicles so you've got extra traffic going around need to point out of course this is a preview build so i want that to be very clear this is still a work in progress although releasing very soon if not already out when you see this video don't mind the ecam memo this is all wrong because i had to uh, restart the flight so we're going to taxi into this apron here and you'll see that there are um, plenty of stands all lit up and floodlights and everything all active as they should be so I'm going to park on this right hand side terminal the nicer of the, the two terminals before we, we go for a spin around the airport and what I want to show you is the the V let me get this right VGDS visual docking right <laughs> you couldn't manage visual guidance docking system that is where we're going to park up it's the system that we use to uh, judge how far we are from stopping and shutting down the engines so we'll take one of these stands on the right here and i'm hoping as we turn onto it let's take this uh, let's go in between these two so i'm hoping as we turn onto it the system will activate this is an automated system that means we do not need a marshaller marshallers are used by pilots to help us park the aircraft they will guide us on the center line to the parking spot as well as tell us how far we have to go because of course although i can see when i'm taxiing a straight line like this quite easily in front of me the line extends out in front of me here what I can't do is judge the distance to the where the nose wheel needs to be. It's the nose wheel is actually sat about beneath row one on the 320, so it's it's considerably behind us by a few meters. So it's not as straightforward as just being able to um, to follow it uh, or to to judge where it is. So we need someone to tell us that, or we have a visual guidance docking system. Now I had hoped to show you a example of parking using the visual guidance docking system sadly i have not had any success in getting that up and running in this uh, early build i'm hoping that'll be resolved very soon i know other people have managed to get it working but uh, for some reason i have not so what i've decided to do is talk about that in another video because it's a topic of its own i'm confident it will work in your your simulators at home but in the meantime i'm going to contact aerosoft and uh, discuss it with them to see if there's a way i can get around this i'm not sure if something's incompatible in my uh, in my simulator but once that's solved i'm going to do a video on that because it's a topic on its own for sure uh, but i have seen other people who have previewed this have got it working so you can be uh, relatively confident with that but yeah it will 
come in a future video where we'll discuss it in full length and give it the, the detail it deserves. Here we are parked on stand so let's take a bit of a tour of the airport and the terminal to see what else we have to have a look at here. First of all once parked up here we can see inside and uh, here's the guidance system off at the moment but you can see the coordinates. This would be your stand coordinates that you would enter into the uh, navigation system, the IRS, if we were using that. However, these days with GPS, we usually don't bother. In the terminal, look at this, we have animated passengers. So again, I'm using ultra settings here, and I really like this. It's it's something that is missing from a lot of scenery, which is that as you sit back and you're preparing the aircraft for, for its flights, you've got ground crew here, you've got people up in the terminal, you've got the flashing lights and the moving vehicles, and it all starts to feel a little more alive. Look, that ground crew down there having a conversation, this is really, really great detailing, and I've, uh, I've I've just not seen it done quite like this before, so very impressed. And as you look up into the terminal, there's a passenger walking over. You sometimes see people looking down, um, maybe they wave at you and you give, give them a bit of a wave back, but there we go. So what I'm going to do is we'll hop out into the drone, of course, and let's zoom into the terminal. JetBridge is looking excellent, by the way, with a 3D modeled person to drive it, which is spot on, as you'd expect. I wonder if we can actually head up the jetty not quite not quite through the whole uh, the whole walkway but we'll move into the terminal and take a look around so there we go passengers walking around even <laughs> that's great even got the moving walkways that's a really nice touch look at that shiny floor as well that's very neat very good so we've got the different <laughs> signs the different gates lots and lots of life and activity going on in this terminal compared to uh, compared to the default one certainly this plane must be getting ready to board. Passengers sitting there all ready to go. Nice glass terminal. And just so many animations. Even the tapping of the foot. Getting a bit bored. They've been waiting for a bit too long now. <laughs> it really adds up. There's someone doing a walk around on that aircraft. Maybe re removing those cones. Very nice. This is a good, uh, <laughs> good bit of fun for me to see all of this. Here it looks like we have one of those stands where you can win a car. Quite a, quite a common thing in airports for some reason. Seems like you can win quite a nice Audi there. And lots of Brussels airport signs. So you can see the level of work that's gone into this. There's the, the toilets. We always have to check out the bathroom just in case. I highly doubt there's anything in here, but I'd be uh, yeah. <laughs> very surprised. But yeah, as we move along the terminal, more passengers waiting for their flights, making it really feel like a live terminal. And I do absolutely love the, the difference between the shiny floor and then those moving walkways. So this is obviously the more modern terminal of the two. Let's go and have a look at the other side and see how, how that one compares. And here on this side, we have the slightly older terminal. You can tell by the, the lack of huge glass uh, oval sides, but this one still modeled, still with animated passengers walking around inside and the animated walkways, which again, I'm a big fan of. Looks like the shops are shut at the moment, sadly. But uh, yeah, that's all loaded in and here, present and correct out to the terminal and we can see there's the, uh, the more modern one over there now here is a very cool feature which again just shows a level of detail in this uh, in this add-on here we have the apron warning system this is not something i know much about it's not really something we're trained for because of course we fly into lots of different airports but it won't surprise you to hear that the apron is one of the more hazardous places uh, to work that's not to say it's unsafe but there are lots and lots of hazards as you can see you have moving vehicles all around you have jet engines with invisible hazards such as the jet blast out the back and obviously the intake suction at the front you've got the high levels of noise so you can't often hear what's going on around you so you'll be wearing ear protection and it's often occurred to me that whilst doing my walk around you know if you walk around this aircraft here you've got catering vehicles baggage loaders that are moving they're trying to line up their trucks with the the loader rather than looking forwards so there's lots of ways that you could be injured on the ramp and i often think about that that uh, to me it feels like the most likely place for me to get injured at work despite flying around in an aircraft all day is probably uh, walking around on the ramp and there are lots of conditions that can make it worse or uh, can deteriorate safety unless you're careful those would be typically high winds and snow or slippery conditions and finally of course electrical storms so these are things that 
airports like to be prepared for and often in those conditions you'll find situations where ground crew will not come to the aircraft there are limitations many airports will have wind limitations so it might be the wind might be really strong and down the runway so we can land but then we'll get to the terminal and there'll be nobody able to service the aircraft or attach the jet bridge because the winds are too strong anyway this apron warning system is designed to show the ground crew immediately if there's an issue and it's done on a light traffic light system here so we have orange which is going to be for high winds then we have let me just make sure i get this right because again it's not something that i'm ever ever trained for so orange is for high wind you've got a red light for thunderstorms and blue if there's cold conditions or snow and i can demonstrate that they've modeled it really well um so yeah you know a lovely nice day no warnings required but then if we suddenly add a high wind so let's increase the wind speed up to 20 over 25 knots there we go and suddenly the amber light comes on. Let me just uh, make it a little bit later in the evening. There you go. So amber light comes on to warn of high winds. So pretty cool. I like that uh, a lot. Other condition we talked about, thunderstorms. So let's put a storm overhead. And there we go. You get the red light symbolizing a thunderstorm uh, and the hazardous condition of that. Again, absolutely brilliant. So there's an electrical thunderstorm overhead. And of course, the final one would be snow. So let's add in a bit of snow. And there's the blue for the, <laughs> the condition of snow so really impressive i haven't seen that done before either and uh yeah something i really like adds a, another level of, of dynamic to the terminal and these by the way are on several of the lights all around if we move further up there you go there's the next one so they're there to alert the ground crew planted nice and high up so they're very visible so there you have it a really remarkable level of detail in this add-on which shows us what can be achieved in Microsoft Flight Simulator when it comes to these these major airports. So once again this is the Aerosoft Mega Airport Brussels and I've been incredibly impressed with it. If you regularly find yourself using Brussels Airport for your virtual flights then it's going to be hard to pass this one up I must say. It really provides uh, an extra level of detail they've got just all of the, the markings the, the feeling of the taxiways and textures spot on and then you've got a real level of a dynamic uh change going on at this airport we've got when the when wind changes we've got the lights coming on we've got the passengers wandering through the terminal and it all adds up to quite uh, an impressive experience and I've, I've really enjoyed my time showing it to you so hopefully uh, this has given you an insight into what this is and uh, if you were interested in it hopefully this is given you what you're looking for there'll be plenty more videos and guides coming to the channel in the near future so do please subscribe if you'd like to see more of those otherwise we'll see you again in another video or live stream do keep safe and well bye bye